YouTube channel. What's up guys? So today we are going to work with Timmy, the guy behind the lens, the guy that creates all the magic, uh, the artsy guy on the channel. He is going to build his own bullets. Now I haven't built that many bullets, probably only like three or four hundred. So I'm not an expert, but I've done it a lot. So what we're looking at is uh, getting him his old five millimeter axis. These are 300 spine. We stripped off the wraps and the veins and all that nonsense, and we're gonna shoot all of his arrows. And we have the time to do this because of lockdown. And we are going to silver sharpie these right here. Looks like that. And we're gonna see which way they wanna spit out of his bow. And I think when we're done, we can decide if they're spitting right or spitting left. So I'm gonna show him the ropes of cutting arrows, squaring off the ends. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do some brass up front, uh, depending on his setup. And I think he's actually gonna go with some really heavy broadheads this year. So we might just do the standard hit that come inside of these, uh, I'm not gonna say come inside. Um, we're actually, I think he's gonna veto brass and he's gonna use standard hits for the inserts because he's going with 150 grain monstrosity of a broadhead. Is that a word? So let's go through it. Tim's up to bat. Here we go. So what am I at? Carbon carbon. No, here. What was that? 28. Alright. Yeah, make sure that's right. Good to go. Good to be on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Eight. Three, four, five. Yeah, an eight. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight and eight. A little bit of Washington, but mostly North Idaho. Yeah. We're just setting these up to get built. Yeah, there we go. So we might be carbon to carbon, that way we can just keep them the same. Yeah, talk about that. So what we did is measured them from carbon to carbon instead of the knock throat, which is what this measures for because he's got lighted knocks versus they might be a little bit different on the measurements. So it was easier to just do carbon to carbon and then mark it. So don't have to worry about measurements there. Yeah, just keeping it simple. You definitely, when you're putting it in here, you want to make sure that there's lots of pressure. And then you spin it evenly and you take it out evenly so you don't like scuff it or not make it square. You just gotta have consistent pressure against everything. Yeah. And make sure that that's tight so it doesn't slide and cut it because then it's not gonna be. And then obviously you're gonna square it up on it or just clean up the edges and stuff like that on this. Yeah. There, just like a few turns. Yeah, just kind of make sure everything's pressure and just kind of cleans up the edge. They have little tools that they come with that kind of you can do that. Yeah, but I saw that. Those little, it's easier uh, to do on something like this because yeah. you can roll it and it's a little bit easier than doing it with your hands. That's probably more precise too, right? Yeah. We are continuing on building these bullets, AKA arrows that fly true and fly straight. So the next stage in the game, these things have been cut. They have been squared. You've seen that, but they've been cut. They've been squared. Next, I'm going to clean out the insides with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And then we're going to use a two-part epoxy and we're going to glue in the Easton inserts. I'll show you that as I go through it, but yeah, let's roll. I'm just going to clean these up and uh, we'll get some inserts in them. The insides, so the epoxy cures well and we don't have to worry about, we don't have to worry about it coming undone. Now here's the thing, I know with brass you're supposed to remove the knock 
because otherwise it can create a vacuum and that vacuum won't seal. But with these, these have a little hole in them. So you don't necessarily need to remove this knock, but I'm going to anyway, just to play it safe when we get to the install part, but I'm gonna get them cleaned up first. Okay, so they're cleaned up. Like I said, I don't think you need to take the knock off. And by the way, how about this? How about that? I wanted to film Dan's reaction when he saw me. He's like, dude, what? Is that a mustache? And uh, anyway, it was priceless, but I didn't have the camera rolling. He was way quicker to see it than I thought. I rolled into the end of his driveway and I like stuck my head out the window and Dan's like 60 yards away. And he's like, yo, dude, is that a mustache? So. My plan was to walk up and have the camera roll and say you could get his reaction. It'd be priceless, but I don't know. Dude's got a good set of eyes on him. Um, so like I said, I don't think this is necessary, but I'm going to take these off anyway. With brass, it, I know it is necessary because you don't want to create a vacuum and then it doesn't seal. All right, cool. So this is like a 24 hour set epoxy. I don't know exactly what brand it is, but we'll link it below. There are a couple different kinds you can use. You can use like a quick dry, you can use a couple different kinds. I just like using a 24 hour epoxy because it, it sets right. You don't have to worry about it. And it just wait a day and it's good. It's not ever gonna come out. I'm just gonna mix some of this up. Use something that you're gonna throw away about the size of a quarter. And then you don't need to use a whole bunch on these. I'll, I'll show you what I use, but it's just it's just a dab, just a, just a dab, you know, whatever that's worth. I don't do this all the time, but every now and then I think it's just important to throw the world a curveball and let them know like, hey, I'm a man. I'm gonna show you my mustache. I'm going for this cop look or whatever. And uh, yeah, whatever, get a little bit of street cred, whatnot. All right, here we go. So two part epoxy means that you gotta mix it together once you get it out. So you can always try to pour about half of what you wanna use and it just keeps flowing. Uh, you gotta pull it back to back it off and then just mix it up. Exciting stuff, I know, exhilarating. Give it a good mix, swirl it clockwise, counterclockwise, whatever. You know, get crazy, use your creativity. And then we're gonna roll. And the only other thing is I grabbed a little bit of paper towel so I can wipe the excess off. I can wipe the excess off the arrow. Easton sends one of these with their stuff and basically you just push it in and twist it out slowly. That is uh, per Dan's advice. I've done this before <clears throat> and this is the part I've screwed up before. We're gonna try to twist it slow and the idea is that you get the insert in far enough into the arrow and that's where it stays. Let's do it. I always try to twist it on the way in so it covers the whole thing, the whole insert. And then we're just gonna wipe it clean. Once we're at the end. So once the insert is flush at the end, just wipe that outer layer clean and then we're gonna push it down. So right up to the end and then twist and remove. According to Dan, that's the trick. So that's one down and 11 to go. It's exciting, this is, this is exciting stuff, don't you think? And then the other part of this that I know is important is when you're done with it, when they're ready to dry, you wanna lay them on a flat surface horizontally so it doesn't fall out or whatever. Yeah, 
flat surface, horizontal, give them the time to dry and set. And then you're done with them. Well, not done, done, but you know, done with that part. There's just a little bit of silver sticking out and then I wipe them clean. <clears throat> that way I can get all the epoxy off. And that's that. We're gonna lay them somewhere flat to dry. Wake up tomorrow, throw some fletchings on, shoot them, test them, do all that fun stuff. We'll catch you guys back. Yeah. So we went through and clocked our arrows. Basically, we're trying to figure out which way the arrow wants to come naturally out of the bow. And then we're going to use our veins to match that rotation. And all of these shot left. This is probably 20 degrees left, 90 degrees left, 30 degrees left, 10 degrees left, 10 degrees left. So they're all twisting to the left out of the bow. Most of them were shot from probably six feet. And I shot this one from probably eight feet. So you can see that little bit of extra rotation. And yeah, then we're gonna throw the veins on to match that spin. So they fly super true. What's up guys? So Tim just clocked his arrows. Uh, you've, he's taking you through the process of getting his arrows cut. He's taking you through the process of getting them squared. Uh, he take you through the process of gluing his inserts in. That was all. And now it's my job to teach him how to fletch. And I think a lot of people know how to fletch, but you know, at all my elk shape camps, I bet the majority have never had their arrows built. You might want to build your arrows. Plus I like tinkering. So let me talk to you about jigs we're going to use. He has a dozen arrows. We're going to do uh, some different configurations and have him kind of test it on his own and see if he can find the sweet spot. He's running these axis five millimeters. These are the 300 spines. And so he's running with the standard hit insert. I believe those are 20 grains. We'll drop in lower thirds what they actually are. And then we're gonna fletch on the backside here. I don't get too technical on how far the vein should be, but we're not gonna do a wrap. Everything's been cleaned with rubbing alcohol or acetone, whatever you want. These arrows have been clocked, so we're gonna fletch one arrow we're gonna use this boning jig right here. This is their latest jig. It's pretty, it's pretty hip. It has right now a three degree right vein offset in it. So we're gonna snap this out like so. And you can soak these in acetone by the way. And we're gonna throw this three degree left. And it says that right on here. So you just have to trust me. And the cool thing about this jig is it comes with all of these. You got one degree, right deg two degree, um, straight, feather, all that. It doesn't come with a helical. So as far as we can go is a three degree. So we're gonna do a few arrows at three degree. This thing's pretty slick. We can switch from three vein to four vein, which we are gonna do. And when we do four vein, there's two different configurations. I'll show you that in a sec. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing set up to where we get the arrow on here and we snap this bad boy in like so. The other option is this Arizona Easy Fletch. This is not the mini, this is the max, and this is a left degree. I actually don't have a right degree one, I, um, a right helical. I wish I did, but I only have it in the mini. And so we're gonna do a couple arrows, probably three arrows with helical off the Arizona Easy Fletch. We're always gonna use a primer pin. This is an Easton pin. <gasps> All primer pins are the exact same, probably made from the same manufacturer with just a different brand label on the back. So know that we're gonna use these custom elk shape Max Stealth veins from AAE. Tim, looks like you're getting pink. And uh, these are cool because on the backside it says elk shape, so it's pretty slick. And we'll show you a tight, tight shot of that. Uh, so let's do one. So first things first, put the arrow, and you have to have your knocks in. And then you just slap that boy right there. Just slap that bad boy in there, like so. And then, uh, we're gonna use knocks boning. In, knocks in, hey? Knocks in, boning fletch fuse. And once I get it in there, I usually click it once. That's the one thing I do like about this. And you can screw this into, the, into a working desk if you wanted a, something stationary. I do not. 
And then you do one arrow at a time, which is the downfall of this. Yeah, you do one fletching at a time, which is kind of the downfall of this, but that's pretty common. I've used Blitzenberg's boning jig towers. I've pretty much fletched with it all. I have a Blitzenberg here. This one is kind of the one I've, I've, I like. Um, if I'm doing helicals, I like the Arizona Easy Fletch because I can use three veins at once. So a little bit of primer, have good lighting so you can see that you are basically getting everything but not oversaturating it. But I would say lighting is really important and then don't use too much glue. I think that's usually most people's downfall. So I'm gonna put a dab on the end piece and then I'm gonna slide that, spread that glue down to a dab in the middle and one at the end, dab. <laughs> Just a small amount. Okay, once it's on there, we're gonna get it connected on the side rail, make sure it's flush and it will snap. And then from right here, you guys can probably see. Now, how long to keep it on there? That's the, that's the magic question. If you keep these attachments gummed up, you're gonna have issues. So you always wanna acetone after a session, five, 10 minutes, soak it in acetone, scrub it off. They were made for that. And if you're like, we've never used the three degree before, so I think we can probably go about a minute, maybe two minutes tops. And then we will basically click to the next one and we'll have this thing flushed up in no time. It's not super technical. As far as the distance from the end of the vein to the actual throat to where the knock goes into the shaft is probably, I'll tell you what, you guys will want to know, so we'll measure that for you. But as far as vein clearance from your face, you may need to tweak that distance depending on where you anchor. And if, you I mean, you don't want veins contacting skin, any part of your face. Cool. Okay, so we've given it for about a minute maybe a minute and a half, and then we're just gonna rotate, make sure that this is up against there. We'll do our next one. Prime it, glue it, stick it, dry it, repeat. And I'm not putting that much on here, so Tam, when you do this, if you push too hard on a primer pin, it'll just come pouring out, and then you're gonna have to wait for that to dry off. But with AAE, I'm gonna tell you right now, if you don't have a primer pin, your veins are not gonna stay on the shaft. Trust me, get a primer pin before you do this. All right, and we're back on for probably 90 seconds, maybe a minute, and we'll have that on lock. All right, that's probably long enough. A little excessive with glue on that one. So we're gonna pop that out. And we are gonna rotate our last one. Let me go here. Again, I think lighting is so important so you can see how much acetone to use, how much glue, dab the top, smear it down till middle, dab in the middle. Okay, we'll let that dry for two minutes, pull the arrow out, wipe off excess glue, we'll dab the tops, let that dry, we'll flip the arrow, we'll dab the other tops, that thing is set up, ready to rock, and then we'll do a left helical, so then we'll have a three degree, we'll do a helical, and then we're gonna do two different four fletch configurations. So Tim's gonna have some options, it's gonna be cool. Pop it off. Excess glue time. Got a little greedy there. Did I, did I mention that good lighting is really important? I'm not sure I did, but. All right, so now we have a beautiful three degree offset to the left per clocking. A little dab, we'll let that dry. And then when it dries, we'll flip it over. Okay, so next is the Arizona Easy Fletch. We'll set this aside. We're gonna swap out parts in a second. We have this guy right here, and I just acetoned it before Tim got here because I, used, I fleshed up a dozen uh, not too long ago. All right, well, so with this one, we can obviously do three arrows at once. We'll knock it out of the park. So I'm gonna go fast. While the primer pins out, I'm gonna prime them all. Gotta be careful with these. If you push too much, they're gonna just pour out. And this is basically some sort of magic formula and acetone. We'll glue each one. Here we go, guys. So what we're gonna do, 
push the spring in, let it clamp down, invert it, and we'll go two minutes, let that dry, and we're balling. While that's doing that, I haven't done this yet, but we're gonna go, so that would be your 90 degree, where all the veins are spread out equally, and I think this is a 60 degree, where you got kind of two and two. So we're gonna have to swap this out so it goes click, 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 like that. All right, guys, it's been long enough. Like I said, two minutes. I like to pop this up, and then from here, just pull each one down. Watch out for excess glue on here. It's gonna mess you up down the road when you get towards the end of your dozen or whatever. I mean, for time economy, this is way faster. I like it. I'm gonna add just a drop on the ends of these, get these drying, and then we will switch to four vein. And then guess what? Tim is gonna take all this stuff to his house. Cool. So Timmy's balling. Subtle difference, this one's definitely helical. All right guys, so we're gonna do the four veins. I'm gonna pop this out for the four veins. We're gonna go straight and then we're also gonna be, this is a straight attachment. What we're gonna do here is we swapped out the four. So this is our 90, 90, 90, 90. We'll do that one last, but this one we're gonna go 60, 120. So we don't need helical on a four, four fletch. I'm not sure people do that. Uh, the cool thing about our channel is that our viewers, there's a lot of them out there that know more than us. That's cool, comment below. We're just learning, we're just showing our process of learning and tinkering. Uh, unless it comes to fitness, you don't know more than me. Tim laughed at that, so that's good. Some people, someone's gonna be offended by that. They have a degree or something. I have a degree in exercise science. Nobody cares, man. Nobody cares how much you know, they wanna know how much you care. Write that down. Okay. Did we hear it click? Let's click it. That's a click. That's 120. There's our click. It should be a 60. Yeah, okay, so here we go. And when you're not really doing offsets and you're just doing straight, that thing will get sucked on there you don't have to wait as long. So we'll probably get, give it 30 seconds, pop it off. We're at, we're at the end of a 60, so we'll click it all the way 120 and do that 60, 60. Uh, it'll be awesome, it should make sense. Uh, I personally never used four fletch. I'm gonna give you my, this is just my opinion, that they work really well with expandables and mechanicals, especially at longer distances. So if you're into that, maybe you want to, to do a four fletch. You know, it works for a lot of people. I can see the benefits, especially on deer. Just, uh, I, I'm for elk, I like fixed. And so for me, I wanna keep as much weight off the back end as possible. Hence, no wraps usually. Um, try to get super light veins. Um, we don't have tack veins. I've, I've heard some good things about those. I've actually touched and felt those. They're very stiff. For, for my money, AAE, Max Stealth, can't go wrong. Okay. Pop it off. Let's see if we can find our 120. Clicked. What if I like four veins? I don't want to be a four vein kind of guy. You might. <laughs> hey, I say shoot what works the best for you. Yeah, for sure. Not someone's opinion on the internet. That's why we're setting Tim up with four different configurations. So he can do his own testing, come to his own conclusions. Even if they're anecdotal, he can figure out you know, what gives him the most confidence. And you can't argue confidence. Confidence kills. That's why we're into doing the lift and shoot videos, the 365 prep, it's because it gives us confidence. And if we have confidence, we're killers. And we all wanna be killers, right? Especially when it comes to elk meat in the freezer when there's coronavirus going around and you can't, you gotta fight off grandma for that last slab of T-bones, you know? So while we're waiting, let's give you a side-by-side -side comparison. On your left is left helical, and there's excessive amount of glue right there. And then you can have just a three degree offset on the other. So if you guys can see the difference. So over here is our helical from the AZ, Easy Fletch. And over here is a three degree offset. They're, I mean, they're close, really. 
Either way, they're definitely gonna spin left out of Tim's bow. We found that through clocking. And then the helical is really gonna make it spin, creating just a little bit more drag. And the three degree offset, I think might be the winner. That's my prediction, is that Tim's gonna like the three degree offset the best. That'll probably give his groups the tightest, but ultimately it comes down to one thing. Slapping his 150 grain behemoth broadhead he's gonna use and uh, making sure he's got practice broadheads and testing, testing, testing. And what does the broadhead want? You have to feed the broadhead. So that's what it's gonna come down to. You could just wait till August um, 29th, 30th, go into your pro shop and be like, uh, I want to switch out to broadheads and they're not, it's not shooting the same as my fill point. And then the shop owner's like, cool, here's a ticket. Your number 750 will get to you September 18th. You know, so don't be that guy. The cool thing about being a spring bear hunter like myself is that I have to have broadheads dialed within almost two weeks from now, which is really cool for you guys because you're going to see us farting around with broadheads and checking tune and making little fine tunements with probably the rest. You know, both of us are shooting bullets through paper right now. Our timing's on, but we might have to do our last little tweaks just to get that broadhead flying good. Oh, that is so close. That's freaking me out. So it's, you can't see it, but it's right next to that one. But it's cute. It's super cute, Tim. You have cute arrows. <laughs> cute is good. Um, I'm really curious to see how this will fly out your bow, man. This will be uh, fun to see these arrows, how they look side by side. Four, four fletches. Um, and I'm doing it for 10. And I also want to showcase that this boning is a pretty legit little fletcher, honestly. Uh, the Bitsenbergs are pretty pricey. Yeah, as these Germans did really well making it. And I have one in storage back there. Um, I think knock on does, they sell them now and, and John like goes through and sets them just the way he likes, which is really cool. If you like someone holding your hands and you like training wheels. Um, but if you're like me, I'd rather screw it up and kind of do it my way and figure out what works best. But I'm telling you right now, I like helical. I'm weird. I like helical and I like to, all my arrows are shooting left out of my bow as well right now. So all my, my good groups are coming left helical. All right, Timothy. Ooh, that's sexy. We're gonna go one big, one last push. That's our last click. Honestly, this is the, this looks cooler. I'll give you that. You ever see the guys that do like, they put like 75 veins on the back end of their arrow? You ever seen those, man? Mm -mm. Yeah, like the six. Uh, vein companies love those guys. <laughs> So Tim's almost done with his first one. And then I gotta, I will say this was kind of a pain in the butt to take off and put these different attachments on. So Boney, you need to figure out a better way to do that. But um, there's your three. We're gonna put that four one on next, 90, 90. We'll, we'll hold that up to the lens. Which aesthetic do you like the best, Tim, on the fours? Do you like your, your 120, 60s or your 90, 90, 90, 90? 90, 90, 90, 90 for well, sure. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see what flies. Do you like? Are you excited? Can you? Are you I'm excited, excited to do this on your own? I'm excited. I'm excited to get them built, and I'm excited to test them. Yeah. Are you gonna buy your own fletching jig? That. Yeah, I gotta have something. Currently, you have a boning one, a I tower. Have, yeah, and it's only got <clears throat> one option. Yeah, this is honestly the multi fletcher is. It's pretty legit. Good job, Boney. You guys are cool. You're from Michigan. All right, so now let me show you how much of a pain in the ass this is on video. But maybe I can do it fast. Take this out. We're gonna set this off to the side. This. Don't worry about that. You leave it right there. Mm -hmm, All good. right, so take this top part off. You got a spring. 
And then what other videos don't cover is there's a specific way that goes on. There's a little cutout. It has to line up with this cutout. So if, I'm pretty sure no one's ever talked about this on the YouTube. So if you have this multi-fletcher, you can thank me if you, if you were struggling to figure that out. So we're gonna slide this off. This is our 6120. We're gonna put on our four. Make sure it's flush. It is. Then we're gonna go here. And then I gotta match that up. So, oh, we got Josh Jones calling us. So let's say, this is the, uh, just Josh Jones. What's up? Hey, you are, we are filming for a YouTube video. So you are on speakerphone. Okay, lovely. So don't swear too much. Got it. How are you? Oh, I'm hanging in there. How are you doing? Good. I don't own an archery shop that's shut down, mandatory from Governor Inslee, but, you know, so I can't complain. Yeah, this is true. Uh, we're still chipping stuff and what have you, but uh, we don't have any... Anybody from the YouTube send their stuff in? Uh, yeah, I had one guy just send his bow, and I'm actually working on it right now. What's his name? We'll give him a shout out. Bradley. Bradley, good job. Everybody else watching, you can send your stuff to SVA and Josh Jones will work on it personally. That's a pretty good yeah. deal. What's, uh, what's really easy too on that standpoint, how we were trying to figure out if we could ship a current bow or whatnot. If you just go down to your local pro shop and buy the bow, you can ship the bow and we'll do all the parts and tuning and what have you. And then there's no issues shipping, receiving anything. Well, we have a ton of comments on YouTube from armchair quarterbacks. I'd love to go through those with you on video. We have a video we want to do basically spot hog. You know, I have a couple different setups with both and I get asked all the time, which is better. And I, I honestly couldn't pick a winner, but I'd love to just go through each is, you know, the best part pro and cons of those sites, the style of hunting, where they might come in. Um, and currently we're, we're doing, we're building arrows for Tim. And we clocked, legit clocked them, and all of them went left out of his bow. Well, there you go. So we're doing, he's got a dozen arrows, and what we're doing is we're building four arrows with a three degree to the left. Mm -hmm. We're, I'm sorry, we're building three. And then we're gonna build three with a helical to the left using the Arizona Easy Fledge. And then we're doing, just for shits and giggles, we're doing a 60-120 four-fletch and a 90-90 four-fletch for him so he can test all of them. Sure. What's your thoughts on four-fletch for guys that use fixed broadheads? Well, so my, my belief in stability is all based off of how much rotation you have before it starts to overlap the next fletch which is why I typically use that three fletch with a hard helical because it overlaps the next one. And I don't see where a four is going to benefit you in any, in any way, unless you back off the amount of twist, which in turn should reduce the amount of stability you're going to get because it's not rotating as fast. So the, the belief behind that is you're also adding extra weight to the back of the arrow, which takes away from your FOC, which should affect you worse than it. And when the environment so to me small diameter arrow you know like a axis or smaller you're gonna have a hard time beating that hard helical three flush when did front of center become such a hot topic man in target it's always been relatively important uh, because it just does group better but um to be honest i'm not sure what sparked it we're going to answer some of these youtube comments as questions do a, a bow sight shootout, basically, pro con, black gold, spot hog, whichever models you think are best. Um, any other questions? And then I might get you on the podcast finally. Sure. I'm sure we can work that out. All right, guys. So we finally got that 490 on. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm going to always shoot you guys straight. This is a terrible design for swapping these out. Either we're doing something wrong or Boney, you need to redesign that. I mean, I love the convenience of multi-fletching and different, I, but man, that took 10 minutes to get that threaded in there. That spring is really strong. So we're gonna rotate this till it clicks. There's that click. We're in, we're going straight. 
with with them spaced apart, we could get a little helical on them, hey? I'm not going to. I don't know anything about it. Comment below if you think you should helical a four-fletch 90, 90, 90. I'm sure you could. But you know what? This with a straight fletch, Tim, and the way your arrows wanted to jump out at the left, your arrows are going left. Okay, so that'll be on there. We need two more, three more. Not the most exciting video, guys, but for those that are getting into this, Tim asked me, have you ever had anyone, like how long have I been doing this? And I just, I've never, I, I started out by buying arrows that were already fletched from big box stores. And then I kind of figured out that I needed to get really good arrows. I started getting into full metal jackets and those would come fletched. And then once I'd get a fletching to come off or I shot one off or whatever, I, I really have to like either take it into a pro shop and have them add a fletch. So then I bought a fletching device and started repairing the factory stretches of uh, the factory fletches. And then I started buying blanks. And when I started buying blanks, um, I'd have to go to the pro shop and get my arrows cut and squared. And then I could build my arrows. Um, a lot of times I'd have the archery shop put the inserts in because I would screw it up. But eventually I bought my own arrow saw. Eventually I started to figure out how to do the inserts and eventually, you know, so you, it's just a process. So start small and over time you'll be set up. Okay, here we go. Did you hear it click? Mm -mm. There she is. How much is three? 50 bucks. <laughs> Why though? Why are they so expensive? Every big broadhead is expensive, man. And then, um, what do three grim reapers cost? Does it, what's 30, that? Th three grim reapers, 35 30 bucks? 35 ish for three or whatever, super affordable. Same. Made in America. Yeah. <laughs> 50 bucks is not bad. Um, <clears throat> you get up to like the, the, some of those other ones and yeah, they're expensive. But the idea too is once I have them, I pretty much have them, resharpen them, you know, unless I shoot them into the rocks. What about, um, I, I, I wouldn't do that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't include a practice one, right? No. So you're going to rely on just, sharpening them and i'm gonna order more i just wanted to order three and make sure they fly through yeah before you commit yeah. to a brand and especially at 50 bucks have you shot iron wheels solids um no because those are 75 100 man and you got vpa yeah i got vpa they're I've hard heard, and steel they're I've simple good things about VPA. they're triangles resharpenable or which one you like uh tim also used a tooth of the arrow last year and what were your thoughts on that? We'll flip the camera around. Tooth of the arrows fly true. They're pretty small diameter. So they flew really true. I got tighter groups down range, but they're really small diameter and they're, they're small cutting surface. So my thought was that they're hard to resharpen. Like they're good. They're, they're like a big field point. So I think if you're looking for a lot of penetration and a lot of accuracy, it's a really good option but not to necessarily resharp and reuse. And part of this is me with the arrow building process is like, I don't want to put brass in my broadheads every time. Those things are a pain in the butt. You can do it and that's cool if you want to do it, but if you can avoid it, I'm avoiding it. And a lot of the broadhead design I want is in the larger size. So I'm effectively getting rid of the brass, upping my broadhead size, and it's going to be a wash. <clears throat> but what's not going to wash is that I'm going to get the broadhead I want, a big, simple triangle or diamond that I can resharpen and reuse. And then that's just going to be my go-to once I fly, find out what setup flies the best. Does that make sense in theory? Yeah. So we got our last vein on of the 90s, and then we will get that off and show you guys the four that we've made today. And Tim's homework is to go home and make the rest of his arrows. And it's going to be cool because... We did four. He's got eight more to go. Let's talk about outserts real quick. A lot of guys will comment on, um, you know, if you want to, you know, you can do a sleeve or you can do an actual outsert and they've come a long ways. There was a year where I took um, a break from Easton and shot BAPS and I used outserts and I could not figure out 
a way to keep those outserts from coming out of targets or breaking. If I, you know, shot an animal, they'd always seem to, it's just to seem like a weakened point. I get the idea of adding front and center with some sort of, you know, sleeve or outsert. But for me, I've had nothing but better luck with inserts. Hidden inserts is where it's at for me. You do you. Um, you're not going to change my mind, so don't worry about like, <laughs> not going to happen, but you can definitely share your opinion, your anecdotal, your narrative. That's cool. We're all about that. As long as it's positive, it can be slightly constructive, but it certainly can't be negative. That's our rules, and we will delete you if you do that. <laughs> So I think they've come out with some outserts <clears throat> that I'm are like stronger now. I'm today. Yeah, this video is going to be... Yeah. Uh, so they've come out with some outserts that I think are better made. And the whole thing that I like about them is you're punching, you're punching a wider hole and then sliding a narrow arrow in behind it. So for like the penetration perspective, they, they can be really, really strong. But All right, Tim. Then I think you've got to find... You can't, you can't weaken the system, you know? Here is our four fletches. Yeah, let's, ooh, that looks good. Which one is more pleasing to the eye there? There you go, that's it. Which one's gonna be, Tim? It's whatever flies the best, man. All right, friends, we got our helical, we got our three degree offset, we got our 60, 120, and our 90s, okay? Tim's gonna build three, uh, two more of each out of his dozen. Four times three is 12. You will have 12 arrows to test. He's got standard insert in the front, 150 grain fill points. So we got our veins, we got his configuration. He's got some experimentation. What we're gonna do is wait for Tim to build the rest of his bullets for you guys so you can watch his journey. Again, this is all about the journey. And Tim's ordering VPAs. 150 grain. I think those are two blade. I don't know if they're single, double, triple, quadruple, beveled. I don't know any of the deets on those. I just know that they're 150 grain. So we didn't put any brass up front. And uh, if you guys do do brass inserts or you do outserts, that's cool. This is what Tim's going to try. Arrow setups are personal. So, you know, you can't, you just got to respect every man's process. So Timmy getting uh, better at archery, 365 prep for elk and, uh, doing this way ahead of schedule because that's how we roll i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh we'll uh, pick up when tim starts building his own bullets just talk about you know a lot of you are out there like us like i i've only built a few dan's built a whole bunch and we just want to grow this thing so we can all learn from each other so i'm not going to mess with this thing right now the last arrow we built was the four fletch 90s i'm gonna build the other two of these and yeah let's roll i gotta remember what's up primer pen glue fletcher thing Okay, so we're gonna clip that baby in. Bam. Okay, we are clamped down. I'm actually gonna time it. I think we're gonna roll with uh, about a minute. And I'm gonna run and grab some Q-tips. I'll be right back. And we did switch glue. I'm just using this gold tip, tip grip. It's just some glue I had. I don't, I think most of it's just super glue. And this is supposed to be pretty quick drying. So a minute, a minute should really be more than enough. Looks good. Rotate 90. Rinse, recycle, repeat. Man, I gotta say, if you're gonna run four fletches and do them solo, like one by one, you're pretty patient 
You're a pretty patient cat. I did pretty good with the glue on that last one. I didn't over, I didn't overshoot it. That's the four flash 90s done. All right, well back to our regularly scheduled programming here. We got off track. Had to, had to, had to swap this thing out and uh, still apparently learning how to do that. But I think I figured it out. It's not easy, but it's, I think it's easier now. I think I figured it out a little bit. Yeah. All right, that's those three done. And I'm kind of fighting the clock right now. So we're gonna get this thing set up and uh, switch it out, wrap up these last two on the left helical, three degree left helical, and then we're... All right, so guys, we have the left helical. We have... <laughs> we have the left degree offset. We have the three degree for the left offset. We have the 6124 fletch. Is that the John Duncan special? And then we got the 9090. So Timmy's gonna build the rest of his bullets on his own. All right, you guys, that's a wrap on the arrow build. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for coming back and checking out another video. Definitely drop any questions you have in the comments. We will be there to answer them and help you through the process. The learning curve is what it is. You have to start somewhere and building your own bullets is only gonna help you get further in tune with your setup. So you understand what you got, the work that's went into it, what flies best for you and definitely come back when we test these things. I'm really looking forward to testing them and seeing what flies the best and then, yeah, making that my arrow setup for the year. Appreciate you guys for being you. We'll catch you back on the next one.